words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for my, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall claim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Saying together Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness is yours from age to age. A reading from Isaiah. I will be ready to be sought out by those who do not ask, to be found by those who not, do not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hand all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense or bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with bread of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps, their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense in the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for the actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, Do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it, so I will do for my servants' sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob, and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Okay. Psalm 22. Do not far away, O Lord, your my strength. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will have way of the name of my brother in the midst of the congregation of the praise. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe, O offspring of Israel. You of Jacob's line give glory. For he is a not to stay in court of the Lord for him to come up. He is there to hide his face from the Lord. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship me. The Lord shall be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For the nations shall walk to the Lord, 
A reading from Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and brought it under the war until faith would be revealed. Therefore the Lord was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The third reading is from Luke. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. The people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by the demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, and Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The word of the Lord. We moved from Greensboro to Winston-Salem in 1988. And actually, I moved to a church, and then he lived right next door to the high school where I graduated some years before. <laughs> now, the organist at that church was very different. Let me just say, she was unique. <clears throat> Her husband had built the pipe organ. Her son maintained the pipe organ. And to say that she had a little bit of ownership in that pipe organ would be an understatement. Well, I'd heard stories about her mother who was in her 90s. One of the stories I heard was the police picked her up one day wandering the streets in clothing that was not appropriate for the season. Let me just put it that way. The police took her back to her home and found a fence and a locked gate. And the police said, how did you get out? And she proceeded to climb over the fence, go back in her house, and she was fine. <laughs> so one day, the organist came into the church, said her mother was in the hospital. She didn't say, please go see her, but I picked up on that pretty quick. And I was headed to that hospital, and I went into her <laughs> mother's room, and she was just in a very strange position. And I thought, okay. And she was very sweet, and she said, Oh, yes, yes, you're over there at Freeze Moravian. Yes, I know where you're from. And she said, Come over here just a minute. She said, Untie me. <laughs> <laughs> she was in a straitjacket. Oh, my God. Oh, and I said, Oh, no, no, no. I can't do that, you know. She said, Yes, you can. <laughs> Come over here and untie me. I said, No, no, no. 
the doctors and nurses need to do that. Well, this kept going until she was shouting at the top of her voice, you can do it, get over here. <laughs> now, I was hoping someone would rescue me or they would hear, no nurses, nothing. So I finally had to say, you know, so-and-so's having surgery right now. I need to go check on them. I got out of there. Now, I was very uncomfortable in that situation. Can you imagine Jesus and the disciples getting out of the boat and this man running up to them, shouting at them, no clothes, living in the tombs? Well, today's gospel is one of the strangest moments, I think, in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus is out in Gentile territory, far away from home. And in this shadow, shadowy, strange place, he encounters a very strange man. The man has lost that veneer of rationality between which we mark sane and insane. He is possessed by demons, we're told. Now we'd say he was very ill. He screams, he's naked, he's deranged, he's living out in the tomb. Now I know we're modern people, and we don't usually say people are possessed by demons. <clears throat> we blame it today on chemical imbalance or a traumatic childhood. But when you see a person face to face with severe emotional distress, you might want to say it's, they're possessed by a demon. The possessed man is delivered from his afflictions, miraculously cured from his illness, praise God. But not so quick. The Galilean pork producers protest. They have lost quite a bit of money in this deal with the pigs running into the water. Darkness comes in many forms. There's an economic side or dimension of our social illnesses. Healing is okay as long as it doesn't affect business. The man's story is meant to be told and received gladly among those who suffer from demons of confusion and despair. It's a story meant to be celebrated by those of us who love people who suffer from demons of confusion and despair. It's a story meant to be celebrated by those who love those who suffer these death-dealing demons. The story makes it clear that no region is immune from the power of Jesus. Jesus works out on the edges or the edges or the of our secure world reaching out to those who have pushed to the periphery he is light in our darkness we need to tell this story not only telling it so happily about the people of confusion but telling it to ourselves those of us who are here at this moment in the light we know it's frightening to go out on the fringe we know we're comfortable here at home, hunkered down among those who are not sick, not confused, not in bondage. But we need not fear the fringe, out in the margin. That's where Jesus is today, on the outside. His power is very effective there, especially there. So we need to go and tell what God has done for us and we need to tell others how much the Lord of life and light can do for them. Amen. 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 <laughs>
On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the so living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Peace the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other with a sign of peace. Okay, uh, you may be seated. Uh, I don't have any announcements here except for the big one, uh, which is that Hank and Shanna had a baby uh, Friday night. Uh, Grace, Linda, Allen. To any fathers that are here, and there must be a few, <laughs> happy Father's Day. Today is Juneteenth. <laughs> That's my message. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. O Lord, in all the world. For all we can do, and we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Let the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean, heart, clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Ready, stand. Say it together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, with the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your grace, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking with glory, holiness, and righteousness. All our days, to Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, we are honored and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn is number 390, verses 1, 2, and 4.